The last lecture, uh, we were looking at uh, arrays and collections. Okay, and to briefly refresh your memory, um, when we declare an array, uh, we, uh, for example, if we wanted to create an array of integers, uh, so once we put the empty square brackets, after whatever the data type is, whatever int or double, or if you wanted to create an array of students, okay, so that means we are going to create an array, right? Followed by name of the array, so if you wanted an array of size five, you will say something like this, right? Then how many memory elements will this give us? This will give us a zero, a1 up to A4. A4, so five memory elements. And from that point on, you can store uh, anything in one of these locations or read it, so it's pretty straightforward, right? Uh, same way, name of the array, new double up, for example, if you wanted to create an array of size 10, you will uh, indicate like this, right? Okay, what if you wanted to create an array of, let's say, uh, three students, then how would you say, uh, for example, SPA equal to new student three, right? So does this give us the real memory for storing three students? No. Uh, what would happen if I try to do something like this? Uh, SPA of zero dot first name equal to, let's say, Bill, what will happen? Will the compiler allow this? No. Yeah, compiler will allow this. Uh, this is an array of students, so from compiler point of view, it's okay. But what will happen if you try to run it? It will come to the slide and generate a runtime error. Why? Because as we discussed, what does this line do? Uh, STA will be created in the stack area, correct? And then in the heap area, uh, we said create three students. But see, uh, if we create a student like this, like new student, for example, we get the memory for all the fields. Like if the student class had five fields, it will give us memory for storing first name, last name, and so on. But here, there is no parentheses over here. So this is just a square bracket. So what does that mean? We basically created three references. Uh, this is SDA of zero. This is SDA of one and SDA of two. Okay. Uh, so we never allocated the memory to store the first name or the last name for each one of these students. So this is an array of three references. So, so far, this is an array of references, not an array of students, okay? So it's our, uh, so this is what we discussed in the last lecture, that creating array of a student class or any class object is a two-step two process. First, you allocate the memory for the array. Then for each element of the array, you allocate memory for the object, okay? So that's why this will not work. What's the proper way to do it? Uh, either you can write a loop or one at a time you can say SDA of zero equal to new student. SDA of one equal to new student. Of course, if you had a large uh, array allocated over here, this is not the proper way. So what's the more efficient way? We say for end I equal to zero. <coughs> i less than sta dot length. As we discussed, anytime we create an array, we automatically get the length property, and i plus plus. So now if we did sda of i equal to new student, it will work properly. Okay, so now if you did sda of zero dot first name equal to whatever, uh, it will let you store, right? So what did this green part do over here? 
very first time through the loop, I will be zero. So ST of zero equal to new student. So take a look over here if the student has memory for first name, last name, and so on. Okay. So this is for one student, and we said STA of zero equal to new student. So basically, this will point over here. Right. Um, very similarly, second time through the loop, STA of one equal to new student. So again, five fields will be allocated for storing the first name and so on. Okay, and then STA of one will point to this memory, right? And lastly, third time through the loop, uh, STA of two. So again, five fields will be allocated. So, so now this is what the memory will look like, right? So now once we say STF0 dot first name equal to Bill, the computer will start from STA, then we'll go to STA of zero, then we'll go to the memory for STA of zero, and store uh, Bill over there, right? Okay, so just keep reminding yourself if you have to create an array of reference types, it's a two-step process. Allocate the memory for whatever size of array you need, then go into a loop, uh, and one by one allocate memory for each object that needs to be stored in the array, right? Okay, uh, so then we also discussed in the last lecture that arrays are fixed size. Okay, once you create an array, for example, if you created an array of three students, you can only store three students. What if, as you are running the program, you wanted to store two more students, so a total of five students? Okay, so one possibility is we allocate more memory. So, so one possibility is if you need it later on uh, to store two more students, this is what you will do. You will say student let's say STA2 equal to, okay, this is an array. So STA of 2 equal to new student of 10 or, or 5, let's say, right? Okay, uh, then for int i equal to 0, i less than STA2 dot length i plus plus sda of two uh, sorry sda two of i uh, equal to new student so we allocate memory for now five students right okay so um, now the first three students are already stored in this uh, old sda array correct so we'll have to copy the data for, for, for all the old students into the new array. So STA2 is our new array, STA is our old array. So you will have to do something like this for int i equal to zero, i less than STA dot length, i plus plus, STA of i, sorry, STA, 2 of i equal to STA of i. Okay, so we are copying the existing three students. See, STA of dot of length in this example will be 3, right? Mm -hmm. So the three students are now being copied into the new array, right? Um, so since we have copied the data from the existing array into the new array, uh, we, now we can do STA of, sorry, STA equal to STA of 2. Okay, so now whatever is STA uh, of 2 becomes STA. So now you can go and start storing STA of, let's say, 3 <coughs> dot, dot first name equal to whatever, and so on, okay? So, so the point is, any time in your program, if you started with a initial size of the array, okay, 
uh, and then you wanted more memory. So in plain English, what's the procedure? Uh, you allocate a bigger array. So if you take a look over here, what did we do? We allocated a bigger array, right? How much bigger it was in this example? Two. Size five. Original array was size three. Okay. Uh, so once we allocate a bigger array, then what is this part doing over here? Copy, Copy. data from original to new array. Correct. So original was SDA. Uh, new is SDA2, so we are copying data one by one into the new array, right? So once we have copied the existing three students, uh, this loop will go three times. Now, uh, what's this part doing over here? Okay, uh, basically uh, we don't need the new array because in our code everywhere we were using SDA. So now we are saying, uh, SDA2 becomes SDA, okay, so new array becomes uh, the old array. So that our code can keep using SDA2, otherwise what will happen is uh, if a few uh, lines later you needed to allocate 10 students, you know, you may call it SDA3, so somewhere you're using SDA2, SDA3, uh, so this way, uh, once this part is done, once this part is done, okay, the uh, rest of the code continues to use SDA just like we were using in the beginning. Okay, just like we were using in the beginning. Okay, okay so, uh, so coming back to this point, even though arrays are fixed size, if we need more memory, we can create a bigger array, copy the data from the old array to the new array. Uh, but as you can see, this is not an efficient or a clean process. Okay? Uh, what if our needs keep changing? Uh, as we are running the program, uh, we need you know, maybe five more students, maybe 100 more students, maybe 1,000 more students, right? Of course, one option is start out by allocating a huge array. Okay. But then that's a wastage of memory, okay? Because we may, uh, uh, you know, especially if you are writing this code inside, let's say, a web server, and there are many clients connecting to the web server, then every client that connects will, if you allocated a million size array, uh, so pretty soon your web server will run out of memory, okay? Uh, so the bottom line is, 